Now, can school gardens and can food conservation efforts, can school lunch programs, can things like that really make a difference? Are we talking about a scale that these programs could make a difference? And I would argue yes, and yes, and absolutely yes, we should be looking at this right now. Now, war changes things. And World War I and World War II were extraordinarily transformational in American society. If you had looked at what the American state was in 1914 and you looked at what the American state was in 1919, you would not have recognized the two. And this was also the period where we got our first federal income tax, things like that. Now, concerns about the food system were a vital part of the transformation of the United States during World War I. World War I, food will win the war, was the national motto. That was what mobilized the home front. Food will win the war. Now, America entered the war in 1917, which was three years after fighting broke out in Europe. The food system was an enormous concern for everyone. And American leaders from all walks thought that a comprehensive program that promoted school, home, and community gardens was the way that America was going to win the war. And the goals for the gardening and food programs during World War I were to prevent civil unrest due to food shortages. Have any of you paid attention in the last year? Uh, 33, 34 nations around the world have had food riots. America actually has a very strong history of civil unrest during times of food shortages. And at World War, during the time of World War I, this was very accepted that this was an issue, that unless we dealt with food shortages, we were going to have civil unrest on the home front. There was also a huge issue, especially on the West Coast, of agricultural labor shortages because we were having a little conflict with Mexico. And we were sending troops into Mexico. And so we, at the same time, we were these um, early labor programs, these Bracero programs actually date to World War I. We were shipping out um, not only Mexican immigrants, but Americans of Mexican descent as well, and just shipping them across the border. Huge problem with agriculture labor during World War I. Now, feed mobilizing troops at the outset of World War I, there were about 300,000 American men serving in the military, which included state militias. 16 months later, 3.8 million American men had been mobilized, and most of them had been sent overseas. It was the first time that we had sent more than a couple of hundred people at any one time over the seas. Woodrow Wilson actually vetted with constitutional lawyers for weeks about whether the Constitution even permitted him to send American troops overseas. This was a big deal. Now, our European allies were starving because they hadn't been able to cultivate food for three years. Europe was a wasteland, environmental degradation, the results that can still be seen today in parts of the Western Front. Now. The federal government and all these leading American intellectuals and public leaders said, we need to reduce the food mile. Now, that's, that's not something new then. They were concerned about this in World War I because the primary means of transporting food was train, and trains were needed to ship troops and materiel. So the federal government and all these leaders said, wow, we have to really revitalize local food systems. Could we learn something from that today? I think so. And there was also a big national concern about kids who didn't understand anything about agriculture, because this was the point in our nation's history where we actually became more of an urban nation. The 1920 census was the first census in American history that revealed that the majority of America's residents lived in urban and suburban areas. Americans were losing contact with their food system, and this was of grave concern to the national security interest. Now, big concern about nutrition and health. You think we were unhealthy during World War II and at the outset of World War II. Much worse, even in World War I, one in three American men failed the draft. Now, there was also a big deal People now talk about immigration and very, very big concern. If you looked at the percent of the American population who were first or second generation immigrants during World War I, 
it was about 20 percent, many of them of German descent. And people were concerned, are, are we going to have a unified public? And interestingly, the way that the government sought to unify the American public was through the idea of gardening and food conservation. And that became one of the big national programs, and it, as it did in World War II, that cut across socioeconomic, immigrant, class, gender, age, geographic area of residence. It cut across. It was a way to unify Americans.